Okay, so this is a video that is going to start looking at the process of building a more cinematic VR experience out of Twin Motion by leveraging Adobe Premiere. And this is early on in the process as you're starting to frame shots, as you're starting to figure out how things are going to work. Um, you need to start thinking in terms of building an animatic before you start dedicating a lot of computer time to longer renderings that are going to occupy your computer for a couple of days at a time. So one of the best ways to do that and start to establish the pacing of a VR experience, because it's a lot different pacing out something that's going to happen in VR as opposed to a traditional animated walkthrough with architecture. The, the pacing for VR has to be much slower, more deliberate, and more thoughtful because the viewer is controlling a lot of the action. So to convey the information that you want to get across, you have to be much more careful with things. So this is just, you know, pre-materials, um, looking at um, an asset that we built in Revit um, called Thorn Crown Chapel um, that I did a larger video on. And um, so don't have any materials in yet. Uh, the one thing is this is in a forest. So even before establishing a um, overall background or a setting to this that might want to make a few changes really quickly. So I'm just going to go to context and let's change um, our background setting. Not that tool, uh, good grief. We want to be under um, location, background, and let's change this from the city to um, countryside. And then let's go ahead and drop more of a grass texture on the starting ground plane. So that's going to be under materials, vegetation. Um, wait, what? Materials, ground cover, nature. And let's just go ahead and drop this grassy ground texture on here. Um, not that it's right but it's just giving me something a little bit more authentic to what this experience ultimately I'm hoping to create, okay? So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and set up um, a couple of panoramics. Um, ultimately, these will be animated 360 scenes, but just as a starting point to begin working with Premiere, to begin laying out soundtracks, all of that kind of stuff, um, I want to start working in a really simple way um, to start establishing pacing. So um, underneath the media, I'm going to go panorama, create panel. So this is a good location for my first one. Let's just go ahead and let's move to a different location. Maybe right here at this entry door. Or actually, let's go right into one of these lights. Because we worked hard on these lights, dude. Really hard on these lights. They look pretty cool. Um, so let's set that up as my next pano. So I'll call this one um, three dots, rename seats, this panoramic, three dots, rename it lights, and we're good to go with two different panoramics. On the export media, I'm going to go to my panorama tab, select both of those two, start export, and for right now, I'm just going to send those to my desktop. And those will start cooking. Should only take a couple of minutes for those. So while that's setting up, um, we'll try our best to do all this in real time. I'm going to go to Premiere and say New Project. Um, two things to look at in Premiere that are really important. I'm just going to call this VR Test 1. And I'm going to send this to uh, my computer's D drive. That's where I have more storage space. New folder, and we'll just call that VR test. So that's going to be where uh, Premiere is storing all the basic files. But I also want to check the scratch disk. And usually I want that same as project. Um, the scratch disk is sort of the temporary files that Premiere is going to build, which can get quite enormous. So you want to make sure you're setting that up as a good location. Again, my D drive is the one that has the most space available. So I'm going to set up both my file folder and my scratch disk to that same location. So let's say OK to that. Um, a couple of things in Premiere. This is going to be sort of a learn and go moment with Premiere if it's new to you. Okay. 
Um, but what I'm going to do is, is just walk through the basics of how I use Premiere. Um, I'm not particularly advanced in Premiere, even though I've been using it for a while, but I'm very specific in what I do with it in terms of architectural work. Um, so I'm by no means a super advanced expert on this, right? So this is my media bin. This is where I'm going to import things. My timeline, this is where I drop both uh, video and audio clips um, to create the video sequence. This is uh, my playback window. Uh, and then I've got my effects over here on the right for transitions or anything that I might do, uh, like a filter I might be applying in Photoshop those same type of tools are going to exist here. And once those are placed on a video in the timeline, I have my effects control what I can do with them in this location. So let's go back to, um, to motion, see if those things are done baking. Cool, they are. So let's go um, into Premiere. Uh, to bring those into the media bin, I'm going to right click someplace right up in here in sort of the negative space at the top of that window and import to my desktop. And I've got lights and seats. So let's open both of those up. So these are just still images, right? There's nothing happening in them. They're just panoramic still images. So I'm going to go ahead and let's drag seats in first. And I'm just going to drop that into my timeline. So by default, a still image is going to come in as a five second long clip, right? So I can do plenty of things to change that. I can take the end and I can drag it out. Or I can also right click and go speed and duration and I can put in a precise number right here. But one of the things that's going to happen as you're working is you are going to find that you want to set up transitions uh, change of image to change of image based off of um, how you are seeing things um, line up with the music or line up with the score, right? So let's open up one of the best locations to grab um, sound, um, music, scores, that kind of stuff. Uh, and it's in uh, YouTube. So I've got my YouTube studio file open right here. Um, so this is just, uh, if you go to your panel, uh, the studio panel inside of your um, YouTube uh, uh, account, you're going to find right down here at the bottom, your audio library. For some reason, the current version of the audio library isn't working so well for me. I don't know exactly what's going on with it. Um, so I'm going to switch this uh, to the Audio Library Classic. And I'm just going to do a quick search for music. Um, I'm going to set my mood, you know, uh, um, dramatic and dark and uh, romantic might not be the best stuff for um, an architectural walkthrough. So let's just grab something that's calm, um, that has strings. And... Um, Wow, Stranger Thing, that could be really exciting and interesting. Um, let's just go ahead. Uh, totally going to guess here um, uh, in terms of what we're going to get. Cinematic and calm sounds awesome. So let's uh, grab this piece right here by the whole other. Um, do pay attention to the licensing on these. Um, you know, a lot of times you say you're free to use this song and monetize your video. Just double check that kind of information right there, right? Because... It's not all the same. Most of these are royalty free, but some of the, some some clips have um, some specific things. So I'm going to click, say show in folder, and I'm just going to move this to my desktop so that it's easy to find and, and bring in. So back in Premiere, an audio clip is going to work the exact same as anything else. Uh, I'm just going to import and let's bring that in to my bin and I should be able to drag and drop that into my audio clips. So if you notice, I've got four channels for audio, and right now I have three channels for video. Um, as I start to scrub through this, we should start getting um, whatever that audio is that I just downloaded. It's pretty exciting stuff. So what I'm looking for um, with audio in particular is when there's a uh, assist, uh, a change or a repeat or something like that that I can start lining things up with. 
so in this first first listen through here there's sort of a repeat with the guitar that happens right around that area right so the things that i can do with that i can if nothing is selected i can move my shuttle this little dude right here to a location that i want to tag and add a marker so that i know this is always going to be there that's something that i can reference back to my video clips are going to snap to that so I know right around here, I want to go ahead and establish a change, switch from one image to the next. So for this one, I'm going to switch from the seats to the lights. So in typical movies, right, this would be a hard cut, one to the next, which looks great on film. Um, it reads great, all that stuff. But in VR, it's really jarring. So I typically always recommend some kind of subtle transition. Um, the default one to go to um, is going to be under effects. Let's go to uh, video transitions, dissolve, and cross dissolve. I'm going to drop that right here. Um, I'm also going to select it. It's The default is a one second cross dissolve. Again, even that's a little bit too fast in VR in my opinion. So I'm going to switch that to a two second cross dissolve. And what this does is it's simply going to fade from one image to the next. Cool? And it's going to start building that for me in a way that um, I can sort of see what's happening. I'm not sort of jarred from location to location. The fact that the world is fading out in front of me gives me that little sense of removal that, that I'm not getting thrown about the room, that I'm still in a VR, an artificial VR space. Um, I don't get sick or nauseous or anything like that. There are a whole series of immersive video transitions as well, which get into the more specialized things, gradient wipes, iris wipes, all those kind of things, which work really well at the right time. It's just, I always recommend don't overdo it. It's, it's like a bad PowerPoint slide transition um, that sometimes they're just overworked. So the cross dissolve, is sort of always a go-to standard, right? So now if I scrub this back and we hit play, clip one to lights, clip two. Now, the last thing that you're going to notice is that in these, I'm seeing this as sort of the stretched out version of both of these images. Um, if I look at the program version right here, right, so this is sort of the default, this is closer to what the output's going to be. I have activated right now toggle VR display. And if I turn that on, it is going to give me what I am going to see as a monoscopic VR view in my head in my headset, in my HMD, right? So this is more what the experience is going to be like. Now, this is not in place by default in Premiere. To add this in, I need to click this little plus button and select this icon. It's, it's an egg with uh, an HMD on it, is what the icon is. So just select that and click OK, and it's going to add that to your list right here. Okay. So now if I scrub through this again, just this one portion, I can see that it's building that transition. And if you'll notice, it is still going to track for you the transition from one to the next. Um, and it's going to maintain the integrity of where you are looking. So this is where you can start adding in a lot of different effects, starting to, to build a building around you, adding things in and, and building things up, knowing that um, it's always going to track where I am looking. Cool. So output on this, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more so we can see everything. Right now you'll notice that I have this yellow line, which is my overall track. This is noting what is going to be output um, if I save this video. Um, the audio track goes much further than this. So it's like a, almost a three minute long track, it looks like. But for right now, wherever this yellow line is, it's going to be, if I do uh, an export on this video, that is what's going to export out. So I'm going to come in and do a file, export media. 
and I'm going to use um, H264 as my base. Um, the output name, I'm going to again just write this to my desktop because it's going to go fast. So it's just called VR Pan Test 1. Save. Um, we'll get more into settings later. Um, I just want to get into um, the basics of establishing um, the right output here. So let's scroll down just a bit. Um, the defaults in terms of most of this stuff is, is perfectly fine. This is where we'll want to enhance later as we get closer to our final. We want to make sure that video is VR is checked. Super important. Um, our frame layout is monoscopic. Um, we are not stereoscopic. This is sort of a single eye. Then if I put an HMD on, it's going to give me still a left eye and a right eye, but it'll be the same thing. So we don't get quite the same kind of depth. But this is going to tag the video with the important metadata that will allow this, if I'm uploading it to YouTube or I'm, I'm looking at it through a headset, that it will identify this as a 360 video. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the export button here. Um, it should only take a minute to write this file and then we will pull it up in Windows Media Player and hopefully be able to see this as a 360 file. And then if I were to send this to YouTube, it would also identify it as a 360 file that then I could watch in my head mounted display, or I can open up the right software in my, um, you know, like for me, I'm running an Oculus Rift. I can launch through Rift um, one of the apps that's going to play 360 video and then open this off of my desktop as well. Okay, so now I've got that video, it's pulled up. I can use my mouse to look around wherever, sort of hopefully they're at a good audio cue. It's fading, super subtle, right from one view to the next. So that's kind of the starting point with this, right? Um, it does look like, yeah, no, I definitely need to go ahead and set my endpoint and outpoint in Premiere um, as we get a little bit more advanced as we further along the process, move further along the process. We'll talk about sort of setting up those points in Premiere and making sure everything is working really well and that you're only getting um, the portion of the file that we want. Cheers, all.